Coming up next in Burbank On Demand, the World Games are coming to Los Angeles, and when these Special Olympians arrive, Burbank will be here to welcome them. What we can expect in our role as a host town. A symbolic gesture for a very real social issue, how this work of art brings new meaning to the term bearing their souls. The Burbank Fire Department will share a few tips that will reduce the risk of fire in one of the most vulnerable areas of your home. And this message from a group of local students is inspiring the appreciation of the arts right here in the media capital of the world. It's all next in Burbank On Demand. Hello, I'm Drew Sugars, Public Information Officer for the City of Burbank. Welcome to another edition of Burbank On Demand, the show about people and places in Burbank that you can watch anytime you want on demand. This time we're coming to you from beautiful downtown Burbank where the parking is free and the opportunities for food and fun are seemingly endless. A little bit later in the show, we'll take you inside the Burbank Town Center where a recent art exhibit delivered a very important message, but first, Let's see what's new in Burbank. Welcome to What's New in Burbank. After nearly two years of construction, the Regional Intermodal Transportation Center is now open at the Burbank Bob Hope Airport. Better known as the Ritzy, the three-level structure will house car rental services and a bus transit station, making it more convenient to use various modes of travel to access the airport. That includes an elevated moving walkway between the Ritzy and the airport terminal. In addition, the Ritzy is built to withstand a major earthquake, allowing it to serve as an emergency response center when rail and aviation access to the region would play vital roles in the event of a disaster. Burbank Mayor David Gordon was one of the many dignitaries who attended the official grand opening on Friday, June 27th. The airport is an economic engine for the city of Burbank and the region. By focusing on mobility, and access the Regional Intermodal Transit Center. The Ritzy helps to strengthen Burbank's leadership role in Southern California in business and transportation and continues to deliver visitors safely to the media capital of the world. Six days earlier, members of the public got a sneak peek of the new structure during an open house held Saturday, June 21st. Visitors got to explore the new structure and learn about the Ritzy's impact on the airport and its surrounding neighborhoods. For more updates on the Ritzy and other airport developments, check out the Projects and Programs page of the airport website, burbankairport.com. The Burbank Police Department invites you to participate in this year's National Night Out celebration at the event's new location at police headquarters in downtown Burbank. The city's official block party is now moving from the Chandler Bikeway to the police headquarters parking lot at 200 North 3rd Street. Join forces with Burbank Police and the community on Tuesday, August 5th from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. to strengthen neighborhood spirit and police community partnerships. There will be activities, resource booths, picture opportunities for children, giveaways, and much, much more. Again, it's all happening at its new location in the back parking lot of BPD HQ, located at 200 North 3rd Street. The downtown Burbank Car Classic will hit the streets of Burbank this month. Saturday, July 26th from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., you'll be able to check out pre-1974 sports cars, bikes, cruisers, and hot rods. As these pictures from last year show us, the event will stretch along San Fernando Boulevard and adjacent streets in downtown Burbank's outdoor shopping and dining entertainment district. Along with the cars, there will be family-friendly music, vendor booths, and prizes. Rain or shine, we'll see you in downtown Burbank on Saturday, July 26th. Work is officially underway following this ceremonial groundbreaking for Caltrans I-5 Empire Project held Wednesday, May 29th. Caltrans hosted the kickoff event that included representatives from the State Highway Agency, Metro, the CHP, and Burbank Mayor David Gordon. The Caltrans Empire Project is a series of major improvements to I-5 between Magnolia Boulevard and Buena Vista Street including carpool lanes, elevated railroad tracks, reconfigured ramps, a new interchange at Empire Avenue, 
and the widening of the Burbank Boulevard Bridge. Well, first I want you to take a good look over here. And what do you see? You see a complicated high volume intersection made even more complicated by railroad tracks. And it doesn't take an engineering degree to understand that this is not an optimal configuration. Clearly this intersection would work better if we get the trains and cars out of each other's way. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Which brings me to the new interchange we're gonna construct, a new full interchange at Empire Avenue just south of here. This new interchange will improve traffic circulation, speed up travel times, and reduce the number of cars using local streets to get around the city. We're also going to build a new undercrossing connecting Empire Avenue to South uh, San Fernando Boulevard, creating an east-west link. And the project will add a few extra freeway lanes between Empire Avenue and Burbank Boulevard. Drivers began experiencing the immediate impact when North San Fernando Boulevard near Interstate 5 closed permanently on May 20th. Also shut down for good are the northbound Lincoln Street off-ramp and the southbound San Fernando Boulevard on-ramp. The $355 million Caltrans project that will enhance I-5 and improve traffic circulation is expected to be completed by March 2018. For more information, you can visit i5info.com. Now taking the field, your Los Angeles Dodgers. Come out and show your Burbank pride at the 23rd annual Burbank Dodger Night on Saturday, August 23rd. Don't miss out. This fun and exciting community event is a great way to celebrate the city of Burbank and support the Dodgers as they take on the New York Mets. Tickets for Burbank Dodger Night on Saturday, August 23rd are $20 and on sale now at the Overham Community Center at 601 South San Fernando Boulevard. The deadline to purchase tickets is July 30th, so don't wait. Get your tickets today. For more information, call 818-238-5435 or go to burbankca.gov. Tickets for the 2014 Starlight Bowl concert season are on sale now. From America's surf bands to the cool sounds of Motown, What's going on? at the Starlight Bowl you can expect the best in music and entertainment for the whole family. Tickets for a great night on the lawn under the stars start as low as $8 for children and seniors and $15 for adults. You can purchase your tickets online at starlightbowl.com or in person at the Community Services Building at 150 North 3rd Street on the third floor, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. For more details about this year's concert season, call 818-238-5435 or go to starlightbowl.com. I'm Peter Masurlian and this has been What's New in Burbank. It's been 30 years since Los Angeles hosted the Olympic Games. Hard to believe the LA metro area has not seen a sporting event of its size since that time. But that will change next year when the world's largest sporting event for 2015 comes to Southern California. Although it's a year away, Burbank has already volunteered for a major commitment, proving that giving is a cornerstone of this community. In just 12 months, more than 7,000 athletes with intellectual disabilities will come to Los Angeles to take part in the World Games. The planet's largest sporting event in 2015 will draw special Olympians from more than 170 countries to compete over a nine-day period. My message to Burbank would be that it's, it's more than uh, the competition that'll take place in 2015. That's just the beginning. Olympic gold medalist Rayford Johnson knows of what he speaks. That's him lighting the cauldron at the 84 Olympic Games, the last time Southern California hosted a sporting event of this magnitude. Mr. Johnson helped found Special Olympics Southern California. His four-decade commitment to the cause led him to a recent Burbank City Council meeting. I thank you, Mayor, and I thank the City Council and all of you citizens for saying you and I will be partners. Thank you. The legendary decathlete and several World Games representatives were here to thank Burbank for volunteering to become a host town in the four days leading up to the World Games in July 2015. I'm so excited. My heart is exploded just for the athletes that are here. The city of Burbank, Glendale, Santa Clarita, Tri-Valley and everything. I'm so excited. 
I can't describe it. If San Fernando Valley native Alan Wales makes the national basketball team, he'll get to play close to home. But for the Special Olympians from around the globe, the four days with a host town will be a critical time of transition as they prepare for the biggest games of their lives. It's a time for them to get acclimated to the time period. Some of them, it'll be their first experience in the United States, first experience uh, in another country. So exactly what does being a host town entail? Well, first, a host town agrees to accommodate a delegation of approximately 100 athletes and trainers. This will include expenses such as lodging, meals, and transportation. The host town also provides training facilities and activities to showcase the host community. A little bit about Bob Frutos. I have a special needs brother, so this is more of a very personal, deep mission for me to promote Special Olympics. Vice Mayor Bob Frudo says that all of us are affected by those with special needs, saying it's important that the entire community come together to make the host town concept a success. Success will rely on various organizations and members of the community to step up to the challenge. Woodbury University is one of the first to do so, offering 50 dorm rooms to the 100-person delegation for three nights. Woodbury is about civic engagement first and foremost. That's one of our four pillars of Woodbury education. And we're also about overcoming barriers, uh, considering that a good number of our students are the first in their families to go to college. And so we kind of resonate very well with the ideals of the Special Olympics. And so I think there's no better way to demonstrate our commitment to those ideals by opening our dorms, op opening our university to the Special Olympics next year. So as the Special Olympians continue training, a special organizing committee will look for donations to sponsor meals, activities, and the cost of transporting the delegation while in Burbank. Of course, it will require hundreds of people to volunteer their time as well. The amazing thing is when you first volunteer for Special Olympics, you show up saying, I'm here, I'm here to help, what do you need me to do? By the end of the day, you're saying, who's helping who here? In the meantime, athletes like basketball player Alan Wales will continue training in the hope that he makes the American national team. I'm hoping I get picked because I want to play. <laughs> I think six foot eight. Why not be pick me? Hello? There will be plenty of opportunities for you to volunteer, and believe me, there will be a need for volunteers. Keep checking the city's website for more information as it becomes available for how you can help out. Still to come on Burbank On Demand, some of your household items may be putting your home at risk. The Burbank Fire Department has some information to keep you safe and sound. Also, a group of local media students create an award-winning video celebrating the arts in Burbank. And phone booths, funnies, and footwear combine to tackle a social issue that touches far too many people. That's when Burbank On Demand continues. You know, when we started in 1975, 1975, wow, the world was a very, very different place. And one of the things we've witnessed only in this current century is the, the tremendous change in the way people get their entertainment. And we hear continually the gloom and doom about the demise of live theater. And I have to tell you, one of my favorite quotes is from that grand old man of the theater, Garson Kanan, who said once, let's face it kids, the theater's been dying for thousands of years. And of course what he meant was the theater will never die because there's nothing quite like sitting in a room full of people experiencing the magic that is live performance. Be sure to check out the world premiere production of Family Planning starting July 12th at the Colony Theater in downtown Burbank. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit the Colony website at colonytheater.org or call 818-558-7000. Welcome back to Burbank On Demand where we show you some of the things that make Burbank a great place to live, work, or just visit. If you missed the unique art display in the Burbank Town Center a couple of months ago, or if you saw it and didn't have time to find out what it was all about, we're gonna tell you right now. 
At first glance, it was a collection of antiquated telephone booths filled with shoes covered with comics. But as Peter Masurlin reports in this Burbank On Demand cover story, the message was quite serious. The City of Burbank Domestic Violence Task Force and the Zonta Club of Burbank recently had an idea that ended up here, at a massive Burbank prop shop. For nearly 80 years, the members of the Zonta Club of Burbank have been working to advance the status of women in the community, and this project was their latest collaborative effort. Inspired by a 2013 anti-domestic violence art display by a Zonta Club in Italy, and the global Zonta Says No advocacy program for the elimination of gender violence, Burbank native Doug Murphy was brought on as the creative director of Bearing Their Souls. So the name Bearing Our Souls came from the concept of a Zonta Club and how they wanted to present the shoes. Bearing Their Souls was um, in reference to the victims who um, exposed their uh, situation and their uh, experiences. Um, and through the exhibit, uh, the shoes will correlate. Murphy's familiarity with exhibition design was one reason he was chosen for this project. Going into a phone booth like Clark Kent and turning into Superman is sort of that metaphor for transformation of uh, going from your current situation to coming out a hero. During her term as Burbank mayor from May 2013 to May 2014, Emily Gabaletti reinvigorated the city's domestic violence task force, capping off her year as mayor with the Burbank Town Center art exhibit that brought attention to local services that are available to victims of domestic violence. The task force takes as its mission that no one should ever be isolated, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whether you're in a a difficult relationship and you're married or you're not married or with kids or not. No one should ever feel isolated. The information has been made available in five languages. One of the service providers listed is the Family Service Agency, which has been in Burbank for nearly a quarter of a century. And the need is growing uh, and unfortunately we have not been successful yet in extinguishing this behavior. We hope we will someday. Um, so we need community to coordinate well. We need everyone to work on this. And we're so grateful that there are efforts like this to raise awareness and we hope that people will learn not just about the issue itself, but to learn and feel safe to make that phone call. Reporting from the Burbank Town Center, I'm Peter Masurlian with the Burbank On Demand cover story. Thank you, Peter. If you need domestic violence services, contact the Burbank Family Service Agency at 818 845-7671. If it's an emergency or you need to report abuse, contact Burbank Police by dialing 911 or by calling 818-238-3000. You may not have known it, but the origins of a large number of house fires can be traced to one specific area. In this edition of Safe and Sound, Burbank Fire Captain Peter Hendrickson shares a few tips that will reduce the risk of fire in one of the most vulnerable areas of your home. Hello, I'm Captain Peter Hendrickson of the Burbank Fire Department with some tips to help keep you safe and sound. Today I'm going to talk about fire safety in your home garage. Every year there are close to 7,000 garage fires nationally in homes that result in an average of 30 deaths, 400 injuries, and over $457 million in property loss. Of these fires, over 90% occurred in single family residences. Why do many garages pose a fire hazard? Water heaters and the boilers are usually stored in garages and they can create sparks that may ignite fumes and fluids. Flammable liquids such as gasoline, motor oil, and paint are commonly stored in garages. Some other examples are brake fluid, varnish, paint thinner, and lighter fluid. The leading cause of garage fires is electrical malfunction. This can be due to shorts and wires, damaged wires, and overheated outlets. There are some tips that can help prevent garage fires from their spread. First, establish safe routines. If you develop safe habits, fire prevention will become routine. When you cut or sand wood, 
you create sawdust and wood chips. These small pieces of wood are much more combustible than the larger boards. Sweep them up right away and you will eliminate a big source of garage fires. Properly dispose of oily rags to avoid the possibility of spontaneous combustion. That means placing the rags in a steel bucket with a self-closing lid. Place the bucket outside your garage until you can properly dispose of the rags. Alternatively, hang the rags on a line in a single layer to dry. Keep them far away from heat and fire sources. Store your flammable liquids in clearly labeled, self-closing containers and only in small amounts. Keep them away from heaters, appliances, pilot lights, and other sources of heat or flame. Never store propane tanks indoors. They may catch fire and they can explode. Propane tanks are sturdy enough to be stored outdoors. If your attached garage allows access into your attic, make sure a hatch covers this access and the walls and ceilings are fire rated. The door leading to your house should be self-closing. While it may be inconvenient, you never know when a fire will happen, and it would be unfortunate to accidentally leave the door open while a fire is starting in your garage. Do not install a pet door in this door. Flames can more easily spread into the living area through this pet door. Appliances in your garage should be plugged directly into an outlet. Never use extension cords. This includes battery chargers. You can also install a heat detector, not a smoke alarm, in your garage. The heat detector will sound if the temperature rises too high. There are plenty of things that you can do to prevent garage fires from spreading to the rest of the house or to keep them from starting in the first place. So take a moment to perform a self-inspection of your garage and remove any hazard. For Safe and Sound, I'm Captain Peter Hendrickson. The Burbank Fire Department has lots of safety tips on its website. If you haven't checked it out, log on to burbankfire.us. Still to come in Burbank On Demand, a work of art to promote the arts right here in Burbank. The $355 million multi-year Caltrans Empire project is well underway and will temporarily pose a few parking and driving challenges as improvements along I-5 and adjacent streets are implemented to improve, among other things, traffic circulation and safety. One of the first parking restrictions began on May 19, 2014. Along this segment of northbound Buena Vista Street from Winona Avenue to 200 feet north of the I-5 on-ramp. The no parking signs that will be up for 18 months through November 2015 will impact about 17 street parking spaces. The restrictions will be in place 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. During the parking restriction, Caltrans will be adding a second northbound left turn lane to reduce congestion and enhance safety. For more information, log on to i5info.com. Welcome back to Burbank On Demand. If you like something you've seen on this show, you can watch it again on demand online via the city's website, burbankca.gov. And don't forget to share it with someone else. Recently, Burbank City Council took a moment during one of its meetings to recognize a group of students who created a beautiful piece of video that promotes Burbank's commitment to the arts. The students and former students of Video Symphony were taking part in a school contest, which they won. We leave you now with their award-winning message. From all of us here at the City of Burbank Public Information Office, thank you for watching Burbank On Demand. We'll see you next time. Vienna, <laughs> keep up Vienna. <laughs>